Uh, it all actually started with my grandfather, who uh, had served pretty much for the duration of the war. Um, and originally, he had come from Ireland. His family had settled in Cape Breton, and then they went to work in the mines when he was 13. He was like one of the Canary Kids, deep under Colliery Number no. 6, Cape Breton. And they all hated being underground. And I think he lost at least one brother, if not two, in mine collapses. So the family got out and they moved west. And it was after the first harvest that he had some money, and he, he enlisted then. And, uh, and he served out and he was wounded three times and then when he came back he picked up his life and he had five daughters and struggled through the depression, always managed to have a job. And, and, and when I entered into my teens I was kind of fascinated by all of it I suppose. And he didn't really talk about it that much but I was really uh, probably unbelievably irritating and relentless about had he killed Germans, what was it like to kill the enemy? And finally, one day, he started talking to me about it. We were fishing. It was a big day because he let me drive the boat for the first time. So I didn't actually see him. He was sitting in front of me, just his back. And he told me a story that became the opening scene of a film I eventually made called Passchendaele. And, and in, in this, his story, he had he bayoneted a young German kid in the forehead who wasn't presenting any particular threat to him. And he lived with that for the rest of his life, shaped it to some extent. And so I, I was always compelled by how, how he came to be in a way, or what, what was it that formed that, or what did he endure? And I guess in a strange sense, I, I think I read about the war and eventually made a film about the war because of some desire to understand him better. And it remains with me today, though. And I know obviously the interest broadened out st from strictly personal reason like that to a more broadly understanding or start a feeling, a sense of understanding what the war has meant to the world that we live in now. And I think it's rather hard to understand the modern world and the postmodern world without understanding something about that hinge of history that everything was upended, literally everything. And so I think it's always remained something essential to me. And in a more specific way, as a Canadian, it's important to me because I think that we were, we really did define ourselves to some extent out of that war. There's lots of trouble after it, of course, and there's all sorts of uncertainties, but we came out from under England's shadows and we became, you know, we grew up to a certain extent and had to kind of wander out on our own. And we're still trying to sort it out, obviously, but we are what we are in large part because of that.